Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. How to die in space, by the way. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So I walk around. I walk around the streets of Manhattan, saying, "Hey, you hey. want to die in space? You want to die in space? I'm writing a book about it. Oh, see, see, these are my internet issues. See, it was just like, hey, I'm gonna decide to work. This is what I'm. It's been a long day, and and it's I. It's been a very long day. First and foremost, I tweeted out the wrong time. Did you see that? No, I missed it. Oh my gosh. I retweeted it, but I didn't read the contents. I just saw my name and assumed it was flattering. Okay, it seems good. <laughs> Retweet. I, tr I trust her. <laughs> I trust her. That was she your mistake. Good. That was your mistake. Yeah. Oh, man, I should have learned that years ago. Yeah, yeah, I know. I had the times all wrong with, with my whole day. And, and yeah, yeah. So, so I... Nothing, nothing good. Nothing good. And my brain's not working. The internet's uh, been a little bit weird. Um, it's just, yeah. It's Coincidence? Just been... I think not. I know. And then the, the launch was scrubbed. But again, like you said, I, I, I do, and we were talking about this too. I don't think that's a bad thing. I'd rather them be safe than sorry. And it's another good test. I mean, they just. Yeah. There's, there's I more game. I almost said on live net national te television the phrase two dead astronauts, but I held back at the very last second. Yeah, you know, that's why I also, I, I did do one thing right in keeping the title of your book in its own tweet, not referencing the launch. It's not related to the launch. Yes. How to die in space. Right. See today, <laughs> Cape Canaveral. <laughs> right. Like just being like, so we're going to watch the, you know, Crew Dragon and also talk with Dr. Paul about how to die in space. How to die in space. <laughs> I wish I if they bring me back on uh, for the weekend to cover it again, mm -hmm. I think they should introduce, I want to promote my book. Yes. As astrophysicist and author of How to Die in Space, talking about the, <laughs> <laughs> the upcoming NASA SpaceX rocket launch. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> Yeah, no, and it, 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 it's, uh, and again, I, I was telling people about this too, because it's my favorite, and I even told you, this is like my favorite cover of a book ever, ever. Um, and this, this book's coming out, and I've been telling people about it too, June 2nd, obviously you see it right below, I'm, I, I don't, but I already knew that, right? So, so. We all knew that. Yeah, so, so can, you know, there's, there's so many things I want to talk about, but. Can we talk a, about a little we bit a lot about? To catch up on. I know every single time, and and then you know the the oh man. Then then we had a, like an actual space stuff today, and I, I just my brain is <sighs> is. I was like, you, Do know, you believe is, a year ago was the uh, all star party at Joshua Tree? Yeah, I was saying that recently. That's weird. That it's been a That's year. Weird. Yeah, it's been a year. It was last June. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. And now you're in New York, and then everything else unfolds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and then, you know, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> right. Pandemic, by the way. Uh, how, well, World question, how is, is, yeah. Yeah. How's that been, though? Oh, so it, it's been interesting. So I, uh, here's a secret just for you streamers. I don't live in New York itself. I live in Connecticut. Oh. Uh, and I commute into this city. So, because I wanted a backyard. I wanted my car. I wanted, you know, a somewhat large space to is i've done the high urban density living before i spent three years in paris and that was enough for me right for my little midwestern brain and uh so i live in connecticut and there's tons of parks all the parks stayed open all the beaches have stayed open uh it's it's actually been really nice uh, i do a lot of work from home like mm -hmm. you do like i have my studios set up here i do all my writing here I was prior to this, I was going into the city you know, once or twice a week for various meetings. And mm -hmm. that just went to zero to zero. Yeah. A very broad range, uh, very highly variable. I never knew what I was going to get a week to week. Right. And, <sighs> and has that been difficult with you having to be a complete homebody now? It's been interesting. Like it's, it's been interesting to see how my work has shifted. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of projects that were in development, a lot of meetings that I was have, what that I was having are now just press pause. And I'm sh we will return to these talks in later in the summer or in the fall. But for now, it's just every person for them. Yeah. 
Huh. How's, um, the, how's the streaming life been? You know, honestly, it got pretty tough. Uh, and so I kind of stopped having guests on um, around mm. the time, especially that it kicked up. Because, you know, after the All-Stars party uh, and just, you know, TwitchCon and then all of that, I was just like, oh, I want to just enjoy the holidays. But, you know, the right. holidays. I remember at All-Stars party, you're like, I'm going to actually have a vacation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, but I mean, the All-Stars party turned out being something that I, I, I was so uh, worked up about in ways that, you know, oh man, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I feel, I felt like I put a lot on my plate and then once I got mm-hmm. there, it was just so enjoyable. Uh, yes. Like yeah, it was a fun party. It, it really was. And, uh, probably, you know, I, I enjoyed it even more than TwitchCon. Not gonna lie. So, um, but, uh, yeah. So then just enjoying, yeah, just enjoying the holidays and everything. And then, then after that, I just, I don't know. And I'm, I'm sure you get this too. Uh, just like space burnout. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was really struggling with that. I would say a good majority of last year, I was starting to struggle with it more and my, my metrics okay, kind of yeah. show that. So yeah, it's just like hard to keep the enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm going to show up, you know, uh, and you know, I, I, I do this, uh, so many days out of the week and live and, uh, I just started to feel like, gosh, I, I just, I just want to play games. And so that, of right. course that, that makes it suffer. Uh, I'm showing up's not mm-hmm, enough. Mm-hmm. You know, people are like, we're space. Are you done with space? I'm like, you can never be done more with space. space. <laughs> right. That's my impression of chat in general. More yeah. space. More space, please. More space. <laughs> um, are they, but, also, oh, yeah. they say please. Sometimes, sometimes, oh, but, okay. but you know, and then, and then, uh, then COVID and then COVID, I would think, and hit, then that happened. yeah, that, that hit hard because, you know, it affects, you know, so many people, everybody. And it was hard for me to just be like, oh, we're going to talk about space and act like this doesn't happen. There's not happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I got, I got pretty situationally depressed for a bit and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely a temporary thing. Yeah, it's been thing. very interesting in New York. Just, and also Southern Connecticut, where I live, is hit really hard, is still suffering as one of the slowest ones to uh, come back. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, wait. I'm getting a thing that you're calling me. Right? Are you? It says you're calling me. But I'm not calling you. Yeah, you're connected and calling me simultaneously. So just decline the call, and if it hangs up, I'll call you right back. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That weird. Um, yeah, there's just, like, the, the, the atmosphere is heavy out here. And I did notice on the Twitch someone called me a fake New Yorker. Uh, you're absolutely right. I'm from Ohio, yeah. so, like, that will always be my identity. I'm, uh, I came here for work and for opportunity. Um, mm-hmm. And... Uh, and it's just, yeah, the mood is heavy and still continues to be heavy. I have a lot of friends and family in the city who uh, just never leave their apartment built. Yeah. And are nervous, still very, very nervous to come out, even even as we open up. And for sure, the general atmosphere has affected my presentations, my talks, my podcast episodes. In, in many conscious and unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and that's that's kind of what I noticed was that I I didn't think it would bother me because being a streamer, I'm used to working from home. But it was it was almost like, you know, always working from home. Uh and, and some people are gonna be like, Oh, it sounds terrible. But it's it's it it's it's not you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to to work mm-hmm, from home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there is a part of, you know, uh parts of working in an office that I fondly remember, you know, uh, you know, like, and and so getting out and like going out to dinner or something like that was always a nice escape. And then having that completely cut off and being like, no, now you're just actually stuck here. You know, even though you're normally, you know, I always, I always, I, I mean, I'm not really a homebody. So it's, it's, I've always felt kind of Mm. just a little bit more stuck here. And then add that added onto it was like, so that one time that you do get to go out and enjoy the world a little bit more, yeah, that's right. not happening, so. Yes. Yeah, 
Uh, it's yeah, it's it's been weird, and I had a bunch of speaking gigs lined up. Oh yeah, across the country, those uh, some were just outright canceled, some were moved to the fall, and some were converted to webinars. And it's very very different to give a webinar than an in person. Oh yeah, yeah, that's and that's that's uh, yeah, that's I I can imagine because you with your book you usually go out and you know especially. You know, I'm sure you do stuff before your book releases and then after, right after it releases, because that's when you came here. Yes. So Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of there's a lot of media interviews ahead of time and then a bunch of talks. A mm. bunch of those talks are now just shifted to the fall. <sighs> and, and that's like, you know, even optimistic, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, who knows if. 500 people are going to want to crowd into a theater <laughs> right. uh, to see some guy talk about how to die. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, but you know, it, I mean, I guess, I guess like it is what it is. I, I, there's not much, um, you know, like I, I still battle with it a bit, but, uh, I, I do seem like it was so funny. Cause when you sent me a message, I was like, I was just about to message you. Cause I also knew that your book was coming out mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. Um, I remember the first time I saw this cover and I was like, oh my God. And then uh, obviously it the title. It is a gorgeous cover. It's yeah. such a good cover. So did somebody do this? Uh, yeah, someone way more professional than me. <laughs> um, uh, the cover design art, it's here on the back flap uh, by Face Out Studios. Uh, they I wonder designed if the they jacket would... and... Oh, go on. Uh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I wonder if they would like be like yeah we can give that to you so i could get that because this this would be a great tattoo idea i'm not i'm not even lying yeah see my it chat is, already I, knows <laughs> yeah i can send you the the high res yeah version yeah it's uh but yeah i i remember i was i'm i remember for your place in the universe i was slightly disappointed in yeah it's very pretty but it was also like okay generic space right 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 and which was fine and it, it worked well and it sold, sold well and so i was very nervous to see what i was going to get and then they sent me the draft from yep there's a sun blowing up in an astronaut there's yep. the visor wow, detail i didn't know i wanted that in my life but now that it's here i can't let yeah the visor detail is 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 so amazing <laughs> <laughs> so good um, i love it and then yeah proceed says i like how his face mask is also burnt slightly Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Slightly singed. They, they, I like it. They, like the cover designer put in like actual thoughts. Yeah. There was there was there was and, art. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. And it goes with the title and I love I love the whole jacket design. Oh yeah. It's, it's oh a, yeah. It's a very sharp looking. Oh yeah. It's it's amazing. So so what do you talk about as far as because you say, you know, dangerous astrophysical phenomena? What does that entail? Can right. you give us like a, a teaser? Yeah, of that? so it's it's really my excuse to talk about cool. Apps. <laughs> That's all it is. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, but I cover all a lot of stuff. I go everywhere from comets and asteroids to cosmic strings. They, you know, I talk about uh, stellar nurseries, the environments of how stars are born, to how they die, to forming planetary nebula or supernovae. I talk about coronal mass ejections and how cosmic rays are formed. I talk about black holes, small ones, medium ones, tiny ones, and big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk about quasars and blazars. Like just, it turns out there's a lot of energetic events in the universe, and energetic usually deadly. Right, right. Energy's not, yeah, uh-uh. And energy especially isn't the, friendly no especially that that cosmic uh radiation mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. that's no bueno no, um, not at all. and so so you said you cover all kinds of uh, like the black hole stuff um yes. i mean i get asked that question a lot so what would all kill you time. first a stellar mass black hole or supermassive a stellar mass would kill you on the outside uh supermassive you can actually pass through the event horizon It'd still be pretty bad, though, right? And then you die. And then you die. <laughs> and then you die. Uh, um, it's like warm hugs, cosmic radiation. It's true. It's true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, yeah. it's oh wow yeah the i didn't realize this um some of the chapters in the book i actually wrote years ago as i was getting i first got this idea together five years ago and i wrote some chapters and i put it down and then i ended up writing your place in the universe and then i came back to this book uh-huh. and i didn't i now looking back i wrote this as my dad of pancreatic cancer uh-huh and now when i went back to reread those chapters like i'm like oh i get it i'm like grieving the loss of my dad right so, yeah uh, and it, it really is like i wrote a lot of it you know, in, in, next to his hospital bed yeah he was getting a uh, hospice care and, um so i think that kind of pathos oh yeah um, came into it came into it and then you know how we dealt with how we were still cracking jokes um right up to the end like i love my dad's of humor and how he approached uh to bring that spirit into this book where yes i talk about all the ways that space can kill you but really it's a it's a love letter to the universe right i love that that's so poetic <laughs> I mean, but, but at the same time, it's, you know, there's a lot of meaning. And I think that that's really good when people, um, especially, you know, in, in psychom or, you know, from an astrophysicist standpoint, you know, being able to communicate that. Um, yeah, everybody says, sorry for your loss. Yeah, I didn't know that. Was that, was this Thank you. pretty recent? It, uh, I think no death of a parent is uh, too far away in your mind. Right, uh, right. It was, it was five years ago. Mm, mm. yeah no it's true it's true though it's true that's very true yeah my mom lost her parents uh my grandparents died back in uh 2005 and she's still you know it's true condolences right. all but i remember um my dad got to read some of these chapters that's awesome i ended up i wanted to dedicate this book to him but um I ended up dedicating my first book, Your Place in the Universe, to him. So I dedicated this to my mama. Aww. And and, mm. and, and, and Dr. Paul Mama is still doing well? and Dr. <laughs> uh, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Dr. Paul. Mrs. Is, Dr. Paul. <laughs> um, she's doing very, very well. She is staying healthy, self-quarantining uh, with her partner. Um, as far as I can tell, getting smashed every night for the past two months. So more power to her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know what, a, what, a, there's something better to do. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. 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 No, I think that that's happened with my mom. The, the margaritas have been kicked up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like every time I call, there's like a shaker in the background. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. She's living the dream, right? <laughs> she totally is. Yeah. So Procyon is a question. So this is a pretty broad book, just all the hazards you can think of, uh, or limited to realistic current or near future travel missions like to Mars. Oh, good question. This is a very broad book and it's based in physics. It's, uh, if you were a hypothetical traveler capable of traveling throughout the universe, this would be your, your hitchhiker's guide to the universe. Yeah, yeah, because we talked about the cosmic radiation with Mars recently. Because mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. whenever I talk about Mars, it's, you know, how Mars wants to kill you. Sucks. Yeah. Yeah, Mars is the worst. Mars is terrible. I was like, I'd go to Mars. I'm like, would you? <laughs> okay, you first. I was like, yeah, I'll, you know. Can well, I have your stuff? <laughs> right, can I just have your stuff? Can you put me in your will, please? <laughs> um, yeah, we've been talking about like kind of going over all the planets and everything and just how brutal even just our own solar system. But again, that's just space. And, and then you, yeah. e even today, you know, just leaving our planet, you know, right, um, right. The so chapter one is the vacuum. There you go. There you go. There you go. And yeah. I talk start. about cosmic rays and what, but also like, where do cosmic rays come from? How do they get so fast? What are they like? Uh, mm -hmm. And how many, what kind of cosmic rays are you going to encounter on a trip to Mars? And what kind of cosmic rays are you going to encounter on a trip to the other side of the galaxy? Mm -hmm. Right. So can it's you... going to be different. 
Yeah, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Because I know people were asking, and I think when I was talking about Mars, it was just one of those one of those things, right? Cosmic radiation, which mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. really a great concern, actually. But um, yes, uh, you know, people are asking me to elaborate more on it, and I think I was like, guys, I have at least like seventeen other items that I need to talk about how Mars is not <laughs> great. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to move along, or else the stream is gonna be like five. And numbers hours. one through seven are red, <laughs> right? Redness. Extreme over <laughs> overbearing redness. Yeah, so talk about cosmic cosmic rays and radiation. Yeah, cosmic rays have nothing to do with rays or radiation. It was just a horrible name given mm-hmm. by someone in the 50s. Or stuck. What they really are, they're tiny little particles. They're electrons, they're protons, sometimes they're nuclei that are traveling close to the speed of light. They come from the surface of the sun itself. Mm-hmm. They come from supernovae. They come from near giant black holes. They come from when stars collide. Any higher high energy event in the universe creates a bunch of cosmic and they just absolutely flood the entire universe. You can't go anywhere with encountering the solar wind from our sun blocks a good fraction of them from entering the solar system. The Earth's magnetic field blocks some, or Earth, the Earth's atmosphere blocks a lot more. But if you were to just stand in one spot, you were getting hit by a reasonably high energy cosmic ray about three times per second. That's a lot. That's a lot. And by reasonably high energy, I mean capable of snipping apart your DNA. Right, right, right. Which can occur, you know, with some of the stuff that's on my arm, right? But, but I mean, yes. but cosmic, you know, that that's that's not on my arm. Yeah, exactly. Like five percent of all cancers on Earth are attributed to cosmic rays. Oh wow, mm-hmm. that's insane. I don't know if anybody in here it's, knew it's that. It's insane. That's... So if you get away from the Earth's atmosphere, then your dose like doubles right immediately. Uh, you get away from our magnetic field, it increases. And then, yeah, if you're on a mission to Mars, you're just going to soak up cosmic rays. So just generate a magnetic field. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, just, well, just make a magnetic field. Just make you know. a magnetic field. Problem solved, next. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Einstein. <laughs> um, just uh, nuke Mars. What you really worry about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good start. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is that you really want to worry about the high energy cosmic rays, the ones traveling very close to the speed of light. Mm-hmm. You would need an incredibly strong magnetic field to deflect. Or- They're just going to plow right. So, so how do, what do we do? I mean, you shut up and take it like a man like a man and then and then and then you just accept your fate exactly that's what we do now i mean Uh, yeah true 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 Mm -hmm. um yeah that's what we're projecting for missions to mars uh we don't have enough shielding we don't have enough protective layers we don't really have a very smart solution for this Mm -hmm. so you just uh, missions to mars you're gonna have an increased cancer risk and then once you're on the martian surface uh, you need to go underground. Yeah, go in the lava tubes, right? Go underground. Yep. Go in those. Yeah, so... Sandworm tubes. Yeah, like Dune. Yeah, exactly. That's what I Which think. I'm looking forward to. I'm cautiously optimistic. Are you? I'm cautiously <laughs> optimistic for the remake. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. But, but I'll, I'll take your, your optimism. I want to be excited about something. No, 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 and you can't. No. Don't take away my joy. <laughs> uh, no joke. We have to burrow into Mars to avoid radiation exposure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Because yep. there ain't no air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's carbon Reason dioxide. number three why Mars is <laughs> Right, another reason. Yeah, it's it's a lot of uh, CO two. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 brutal. It's brutal. Its atmosphere is yeah. not forgiving. It doesn't have a great. I mean, barely even has a magne- magnetosphere at all. Really, yeah. it's pretty negligible. Come on, I'm joking around. Come on. <laughs> at some Get point, serious. Some point it might have right. So. Yeah, billions of years ago, it probably had a molten core. Probably had a functioning magnetic field. 
had liquid water oceans, had atmosphere, was was and is in the habitable zone of the sun. Yeah. But it's yeah. just sad. Yeah, see, Procyon said, I assume we could live in a shelter on the surface. See, that, that's the problem that they have with all the animations, getting people hyped for Mars. Because if you think about it, and Dr. Paul, tell me if you agree or not. But if you had to, like, make a, it's like a vacation video is what I'm thinking in my head, right? Would you, even though it's not going to be a vacation at all. But would you rather have, like, a nice, like, biodome or, like, you know, kind of, like, here's a nice little above the ground getaway not really a getaway at all but i'm just thinking of how they you know sell these things right it's marketing yeah, yeah. or are they going to show you like you're going to live underground <laughs> you know close yeah quarters. exactly it's 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 like that airbnb ad where right they very carefully select the shots and you think it's this really spacious palatial thing and yeah. then you get there and it's someone's danky bait yeah, like they haven't washed the towels that have been hanging on the rack for probably five or six yes. months, you know? A Mars, um, an actual functioning Mars habitat will look like uh, your creepy uncle. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, um, there's like a couch from 1970-something in the corner. You know, there's honestly. There's on the walls that you don't even want to ask about. Yeah, I had a creepy uh, aunt and uncle house. Yeah, you know this resident. This this is hitting home. Yeah. Yep. Thanks so for the visual. That's what, and, <laughs> and no one's gonna go there. Like you can't sell the next generation of astronauts on the creepy basement vibes. They're like, ooh, fancy high tech Mars habitat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're like, ooh, look at this. We get a nice dome. Look, we're making food. No problem. We're all hanging no, out. No, you're going to be a mole person. Yeah, you're going to get your eyes evolutionarily over time. <laughs> You'll get tiny, <laughs> squinty eyes. You'll grow hairs on your face like so you can sense subtle oh, movements of air. It's going to be akin to if anybody's ever had to wear a cast for a long time and then when they take off the cast. Yes, you get a mole person arm. <laughs> a mole person arm. It's so true, though. It's so yeah. true. <laughs> so or maybe maybe they'll end up having marshes will have like long arms with like long clawy fingers, you know, from burrowing <laughs> through the dirt. Oh my god, long, we are pointy noses. Yes, that's this is what I I've actually made jokes about this, but I started to like back off it because people just think I'm a Debbie Downer when I talk about Mars. But now you've got a book here that makes me feel yeah, a little I've got bit a better. <laughs> you got a book. I'm an authority. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I feel totally fine talking about it, and and not only is that that soil that you're digging in you it's 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 got perchlorates you know yeah, it's literally poison yeah for your thyroid you know rip thyroid by the way so more people with bad eye of great thyroid <laughs> what's the book link dr is that paul a goiter? no it's my <laughs> superiorly evolved thyroid gland <laughs> it's so great <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens every time i start crying like every time oh my god and then the bone density loss right right yeah the calcium that's just oh gonna... yeah yeah and all the babies like like can a human spine grow straight in low g yeah how how is amniotic fluid gonna even so we're gonna have all like crooked babies <laughs> crooked baby mole people <laughs> It's gonna See, be Martians are gonna be gross. Yeah, yeah. Like future future Earth people are gonna hate Martians because they will look like Yeah, and that's where maybe the expanse is a little bit right, you know? You know, like there's like this mm -hmm, divide mm -hmm. between, you know, people of Earth and Martians, you know, but for different reasons, less glamorous reasons that Hollywood doesn't want you to know. Um Yeah, they're not gonna look like Bobby. No. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> They're not <laughs> bone juice people, <laughs> bone juice, <laughs> but it's, it's true. I mean, and this is just, 
this is, I mean, again, this is just talking about Mars and your book goes into all kinds of other things like, and, and you know, yeah, with that's, the, that's chapter one. Yes. Yeah, chapter one. And then, then, you know, like we've, we've found this, uh, you know, I think I, I, cause I've been really bad at reading my press releases. Not going to lie. I've just been, I, right now I'm just trying to be like, do space, stream space, have guests on. I don't even subscribe to press releases cause I just can't keep yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't do it. So someone was like, you, "Did you hear they found a, you know, a black hole that's closer to Earth?" And I'm like, "Oh, how close?" They're like, you know, a thousand light years away, like, fifteen hundred yeah. light years, yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah. And I, I, I was like, oh, "That's, that's cool." And they're like, "So cool. That's cool." Is is oh, are we gonna is. die? <laughs> yes, but <laughs> probably from heart disease. Yeah, probably from something else. Yeah. But yeah, that, that that I don't know. I feel bad when people are like, you know, really amped about finding something like that. I'm like, there's probably one that's even closer. Probably. Oh, probably, which is with the whole point of the research. Like, look, we if we're just dumbly searching and we happen to find a black hole that's closer, that means there's probably one that is undetectable but even closer. Mhm. Yeah. 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 And uh, Doom with Paul, I mean, How to Die in Space. This is a book that's coming out. Uh, you know, it's on sale. You can pre-order it right now on yeah. Amazon. Uh, Amazon? Yeah, you can You can pre-order Amazon. Uh, pre Amazon. Uh, you can pre-order my book. See, it's got lots of words in it for reading smarts, people. Uh, you can pre-order on Amazon, or you can pre-order off my website to get an autographed copy when it comes out. Yeah, yeah, right there. I'm, I'm not even getting an autographed copy yet it's because we're having the publisher sing i know i know which is which is fantastic the fact that they could get that um out there um i'll socially distant <laughs> autograph your copy <laughs> socially distance that please <laughs> virtual signature uh virtual I, signature i only read books with pictures well oh there are pictures there are oh. pictures there is a color insert hmm with eight prints mm. yes we have nebulae we have asteroid surfaces we have black holes consuming things are you are wait are you touching in the book i'm touching a book i can tell so, i can tell you can tell because i was flipping through it i like, can tell Here, I'll, I'll do that <laughs> that wasn't a fart that was me going through the pages really <laughs> <laughs> I can tell he's sitting here. So one of the best clips that we have with Dr. Paul was when the connection went bad when he was in his office in Ohio and the connection went bad. And the next thing you see is he has his book right next to his face and it cut to it. So that's why mm -hmm. I always have that in my head. So hearing this, it's really funny. Um, yeah, I it, just walk around holding my book right next just to me, right, just in case. Right next to him. Primo photo op. Yeah, yeah. Um, Addison or flip up model of a black hole. Ooh. Mm. Centerfold. Mm hmm. Uh, what about cheese? What about cheese, Daddy Cupcake? Cheese, uh, is discussed in the book. Is it? Um, uh, it's mentioned. Don't okay. worry, there's some cheese in jokes. In okay. The book, of course. Okay. Uh, but I do do, you know, I do space radio every Thursday at mm -hmm. 8 p.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. At the end of every single show, I do a cheese tape. Mm. It happens every single episode. Right. Well, we're that's remember cheese, that's when we cheese. talked. Yeah, we talked about that. And then we were talking about your bad cheese experience. And we talked about. Um, oh gosh. Yeah. And we had a different name for it. Guterb. Guterb. <laughs> Yes. I did almost die recently. I, I don't know. All the cheese forks uh, are still out. So I still have like Tina. And oh, good. Basic James. Yeah, I still have uh, all my cheese forks. They make a regular appearance. I good. did almost die a few weeks ago eating them. What, what did you eat? Not, not bad. That was uh, distasteful. Bad as in gone bad. <gasps> oh. Yeah. I had a string cheese that. I guess Ooh. was kind of partially open recently. Yikes. Yeah. And I didn't realize cause I looked at it, but then later I tasted it and I was like, Oh, okay. Uh Oh mm. yeah. 
Mm-mm. I didn't know string cheese was so tangy. I, I, I yeah, I was not okay uh, after not that experience. Okay. Mm-mm. Nope. And that's string cheese. So like, that's not you know like that's bottom barrel, right? You know. I'll like, eat a good string. Yeah, I mean, it's it's convenient. So, but yeah. So, what kind of cheese? What kind of what kind of mold went moldy? I don't even remember. It was just. I bought it already on manager's special because it was close to the expiration date, but I thought it'd be good for another week or two. Sure. And yeah, nope. it wasn't. Wasn't. Did you, did you try it on space radio or? Yes. Cause I, I try it live every, right. every episode. Right. Like I open the package. I do the whole thing. So do you have a link that you can send us? To I'll that. look for it. I will look for it. I can't believe you didn't bookmark that. That because we have to watch this now. Yeah, I'll I'll pull it up. I feel like you would remember what you were talking about as you. Oh, well, it also like actually damaged me. Yeah. Okay. Like, physically okay. and mentally. So yeah. I can try to find it right now while we're chatting. Yeah, because that 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 would be gold. Um, because yeah, he does do that, guys on space on space radio. Um, which we were just going through some of the stuff talking about planet nine. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and looking at your, your page, I, I, uh, I, I got to admit that the, I was hoping that you wouldn't have any more bad cheese experiences after Gooder. I've had some, I've had some, <laughs> had some, <sighs> had some wild ones. Is that what you tried to say there? Just worse. Oh, worse, worse, worse. Oh, no. Oh. I had some wild ones, too. <laughs> String cheese, peel, or bite? Oh, peel. Uh, both. It depends. Are you in a rush? Or um, if you're eating it with a cracker, I'd say bite. Wait, eat string cheese with a cracker? I mean, sometimes I have to act like I'm fancy when I'm not. You know? have to settle for like the cracker and cheese type deal and then i realized right, oh, like you're trying to set out like yeah you're trying to make this you're trying to make it a thing yeah you being fancy just gotta go for it sometimes who bites string cheese i mean sometimes now my stomach's growling that's great I mean, technically you always bite string cheese unless you just strip it and then shove it down your gullet yeah and that's un-chewed. gross right that's not okay it's gross that's terrible it's not okay uh-uh no uh same people you missed someone said string cheese theory <laughs> yes i love it uh so what was your favorite part in this book what chapter did you love writing the most i actually really really enjoyed the uh middle part <laughs> i couldn't think of an answer <laughs> good job <laughs> good job no i really liked the uh the the last section i organized all these threats by interplanetary then interstellar intergalactic speculate wait, and wait say that again okay so my i have four sections uh-huh. in the book uh interplanetary threats okay interstellar threats intergalactic threats mm-hmm. and then speculative Mm. And it was really fun to write the speculative threats chapter. This is where I talked about aliens, <gasps> uh, wormholes, <gasps> dark matter, cosmic strings, like some really, really fun topics. Like the topics I always make you repeat over and over again. Over and over and over again. So now when you, when chat asks me again, I can just read directly from my book and I don't have to work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Brilliant. Uh, See, this is why this is why I wrote the book. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Oh, did Dr. Paul say aliens? See? See? Did I say aliens? <laughs> hey, Crudgy, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, I knew I knew that'd be it. And then wormholes. Oh my gosh. Did you did you talk about white holes or did we just leave that one out? Uh white holes are mentioned when I talk about wormholes. Oh, as in, like, you probably just say they, they don't exist. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why people get so excited about white holes. They just, I don't either. They just, they're just not a thing. 
I know. I, it, it, you know, luckily I haven't had too many people, but, but, you know, uh, we haven't talked about black holes in a little bit. Uh, that's, that's, that's coming up soon. So I just, uh, I, I feel like we should just get like an audio clip, even though we have it, obviously we have a whole YouTube that has, uh, all of our interviews on it. Um, I really should just like highlight one and, and I think I do have one at like a certain pause. And so I just play that one over again, but sometimes I have to scan through it. Um, oh yeah. So that's a good question. Uh, what's, what's the worst space death that you describe or mention or talk about in your book? Ooh, that's a really that good is question. A good one. I would have to say going into a wormhole wormholes are inherently unstable and so as soon as you enter one you have a good chance of all your constituent parts being distributed throughout the known universe mm -hmm. hold on i just I, I think, yeah say that again because i totally had to just say that in chat so go on uh the uh i would say the worst death would be Try, trying to travel through a wormhole. Wormholes are inherently unstable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So as soon as you enter one, they, it will collapse. And then you have a good chance of all of your constituent parts being distributed throughout the known universe. Ooh. Ooh. I, I, you know, the thing is, I probably think that your first chapter might be my favorite, though, the vacuum. The vacuum was fun, too, because uh, I got to introduce a lot of science history in that book. Uh, I talked about what happens when you die in the vacuum, but then also what is the vacuum and why did it take us so long to believe that the vacuum exists and what is the fundamental nature of space time? Yeah. Yeah. And do you go over any, cause I mean, talking about research with it, uh, have we had any, I think we had like, no, we haven't had actually any in death, like any death in space yet. Not in space. Um, all the deaths have been in. Yeah, like reentry, uh, or or leaving, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because so do you talk about like how you would die in the vacuum and how that would work? Because a lot of people think of like Hollywood, right? That your eyeballs are gonna pop out and you know all this stuff, right? Uh, yes, I do talk about how you actually die in the vacuum. And it's, it's less, um, it's less cinematic, but yeah. actually much more horrifying. Yeah. I mean, because you, you just quietly fall asleep in 20 seconds and then a couple of minutes later, you're. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Oh man. Oh man. Cause I think it's your phone has the audio sensitivity detection. So you cut out on that last part. So you fall asleep. Oh, no. I know, like right on the best part, it was like a cliffhanger. I was like, I don't know yeah, if that's you, intentional. Yeah, in 10 to 20 seconds, you fall asleep, and then in a couple minutes later, you're dead. That's it. And then you just become a, a, a corpsicle. You can. If you're in direct sunlight, you oh, will not freeze. right, right, right. Because you're getting enough radiation from the sun. True. Yeah. That doesn't uh, so actually you have to be him. either in shadow or far away from the sun and you will eventually freeze. It'll take you a couple hours yeah. to freeze out. Yeah. Um, oh, he found oh, the bad I cheese the one. Link yeah, to, I see yes. it. Awesome. I'm moving that over here too so I can copy that link address and then put it over here so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, perfect. Um... Yeah, because that's that's what I've always understood is like a death in space <clears throat> in in you know, you it, it, you know, again, people think that it's going to be very exciting from what Hollywood shows us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, again, like, I mean, wouldn't you just, like falling asleep would be just, you know, suffocating, right? Yeah, it's it's asphyxiation. It's yeah. uh, no air, no air, right? No air, no oxygen, no brain activity no activity period yeah yeah um if we buy the book if we buy the book will we get an ebook version to read now i assume that they'd be only that only be on amazon 
Not uh, till there June is 2nd, an ebook right? version, and it doesn't release. The ebook doesn't release till June second. There is also an audio book that is read by me. Oh, really? Yes, I I auditioned and everything to be the reader for my own book. That's awesome. I figured that you would have. I mean, I mean, always like because as he, I don't know if you know this, but Doctor Paul is pretty funny and animated. <laughs> I don't know if you <gasps> knew that, but um, that's awesome. That's actually really, really cool. It's not a foregone conclusion. So first, an audiobook publisher had to become interested in the book itself, which they did, and they bought the rights from my publisher. And then I said, hey, I'd like to be the reader. And they said, well, normally we don't let the authors be readers. And I said, well, let me audition. And they said, okay. And I auditioned. They're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. They're like, you know, Dr. Paul, we need that at intensity for, you know, can you give us like five yes. more points of intensity, Dr. Paul? Yes, it was. It was funny because I normally I would have gone to their recording studio in Manhattan, mm -hmm. but that's not really an option nowadays. So I recorded the entire book. It's, I took five days mm -hmm. uh, with a director on Skype. Uh, it took uh, I read it in my closet. Mm hmm because that was the best sound proofing room in my house yeah no yeah i could i could see that so i, I spent see that. five days locked in my closet and out came an audio that's amazing dr paul so reading to himself release, in his closet yes. <laughs> yes so you can pretend you're in there with the closet with me hiding from the coronavirus in space in space <laughs> and yeah so that will come out june 2nd there'll be links on amazon to get the uh and then the autograph books are only available from my website or if you happen to come to one of my events but that's not till the fall yeah yeah um wow see this opens up this is why i love this is because i uh, i was always hoping that someone would write something because, you know, people have morbid curiosity and I feel like that's something that's mm -hmm. so taboo and everybody's like, you know, I, I try to talk about morbid topics every now and again just to, because I don't feel like, I feel like it's like a cultural thing where people feel not very comfortable with their own uh, mortality. They just, uh, it's, it's very iffy subject. So this is obviously very nice because it's, you know, not only taking that, but combining it with space and how, you know, humans are most certainly humans um, and fragile. So someone said, does a body ever decay in space or does it stay preserved forever? It will eventually decay from micrometeorites. So tiny, tiny little uh, meteoroids will constantly bombard you and they'll carve tiny, tiny little chunks out of your flesh and eventually you will get pulverized. That's lovely. See? That's lovely. The romance I, of space travel. Right. And and you also would have to, you know, because you, you'd just likely be floating off, you know, and, and it, radi radiation too, right? Like probably you're not going to look too great if there's any kind of exposure anyways, right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be ugly. If you are close <laughs> to a star, right. you'll get, uh, you know, a mild sunburn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, your all the oils and liquids and fluids on the surface of your skin will instantly crystallize and which will lead to damage everywhere and yeah you'll just be some curled up mess mm -hmm. yep space medicine such a new field <laughs> so basically sandblasted in space yeah, over the course, it takes a long time. It'll take a long time. I think it would take roughly a thousand years for you to fully disintegrate. Mm. Wow, that's yeah, that's 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 intense. That's longevity. That is. That really is. That really is. Um, but we are coming up on the the hour here, and oh uh, no, time goes so fast. It does, especially. Because, I mean, I was telling everybody, I was like, I'm so tired. But, you know, with Dr. Paul, he's so easy to talk to. And I'm probably going to, you know, get a burst of energy just, just from talking. Oh, um, yeah. That's true. So uh, do you want to take maybe one more question? If somebody has one more question about the book. And, uh, Let's do it. Space madness. Mm-hmm. 
And then we're going to watch, we have to watch the, that, that, that video that you sent that, that, that yeah. has to happen. Um, oh, what if I was nowhere near a star or any asteroids? So I'll let you handle oh, that. Oh, like, so yeah, exactly. So if you're far away from a star, you will freeze to death. You'll become all the water and you will freeze. But these micrometeoroids are just everywhere. They even, they're even in interstellar space. Plus, you've got the cosmic rays, plus high energy radiation like X rays and gamma rays. Eventually, time will do its work. Yes. So, which is to kill you. That's, which is to that's, kill you. That's the job of time. Yep. Even now. I feel like that's like a really good place to end that. I mean, we're just giving wow, everybody all the hope. Yeah, I mean, the whole book's a downer, so. <laughs> I'm it excited works. for it. I'm, I'm actually really excited for this one um, because, again, it's just everything I said before, but uh, I feel like this is this is really interesting. And also, you know. It was, it was a really fun book to, to write. I bet. I, I had a real joy writing it. And, and, you know, maybe if, if Christmas comes around and we get all the interwebs things figured out, we can do another cozy reading from this book you well, know you can do how about this how about when you get the book uh-huh how about i come back on once you've got yourself a copy uh-huh we could do that well yeah no i Let's i want to i want to make and i think I, I said that in the email i want to i want to start doing these more regularly like we were doing before yes. um, back in the good old time. Back, back in the in good the old days times. remember that uh so yeah uh, space doesn't even let me be whole <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on and uh yeah, we'll chat soon and and this book guys, that's next week by the way. That's next Tuesday. Right? Next Tuesday it's happening. It's dropping. It's dropping. There's all of Dr. Paul's stuff right there. Thank you, Nero. Um and uh yeah, we'll get him back. Get him all back right. on. I'm so glad I could stop by. 